all right, at least we're getting somewhere. At least we're now finally trekking among the stars. How you going? Welcome to my Star Trek Picard Season 1 Episode 3, The End is the Beginning Review. So to start off with, I'd like to make a correction from the previous episode. I said that it was weird that the Romulans said that Green was get the hell out of there. So apparently Romulan blood is green and apparently humans use red as a sign of danger because that's the colour of our blood. So it makes sense, therefore, that Romulans would use green as a sign for danger. So episode 3 starts 14 years in the past and Picard is walking out of Starfleet headquarters and he's just been told that his plan won't be going ahead. This is 14 years in Star Trek Picard's past, mind you, not 14 years in our past. So it's the year 2385. So it seems that the robot rebellion on Mars happened before Picard had actually had his plan approved? Or was this some kind of a reapproval for a new plan after the shipyards were destroyed so Picard's there with Raffi it looks like she's a member of engineering or security or something in Starfleet and she keeps calling him JL which is the worst nickname it doesn't even roll off the tongue like John Luke is easier to say than JL so Raffi says that she smells the Tal Shiar among this so how does she know about the Tal Shiar there's supposed to be some sort of a secret police the secret police aren't known to many people. Unless she maybe had some dealings with them during her time in Starfleet, I guess. We will never know. And then John Luke doesn't know why the Tal Shiar would be involved because he can't see why the Romulans would prevent the rescue of the Romulans. I think that's a good point, JL. And JL gave Starfleet an ultimatum, basically either accept his proposal or accept his resignation. And they chose to accept his resignation. So he retired. And Raffi is annoyed at him because it's okay for him because he gets to go home to France and drink wine and look after the vineyard. But she's young and she hasn't put away enough money. So she's like, well, what am I going to do? I just lose my job. I'm now destitute. The acting in this scene was a bit dodgy. I don't know if it's just because they had like makeup slathered on them to make them look young or something but they just didn't seem to be emoting very well and does every scene that's outdoors have to either start or end with a shuttle taking off is that just a thing now so then we're in the current day and picard is at raffi's trailer home and raffi is smoking snake leaf every day she's part of the vape nation y'all so uh, it looks like she's got some substance abuse issues. And she seems to have a bit of an issue with the class divide between her and Picard. So Raffi tells Picard that he basically shouldn't have told Command his plans because now other people know and they can try to stop him. And she's really ticked off at Picard because in all these years he never once came to visit or just to see how she was. The only time he ever got in touch with her was because he needed something from her. But I feel like maybe in this situation, you don't call someone by their pet name. Like she keeps calling him JL, whereas she should probably be calling him Admiral or something like that. Something in the show that she's not happy with him. So Raffi grabs a bottle and heads off to be by herself. And then Picard goes, oh, Raffi. And then he sort of turns around and like stares blankly and then goes, Raffi. And I thought that was a bit weird, like, I think maybe the direction he was supposed to be like, oh, Raffi, come on. And then like turn around and be like, oh, God, you know, what can I do? Oh, God, Raffi. But I guess the stage direction probably just told him to call out to Raffi and then turn around and think for three seconds and then go after her. So then we're on the Romulan reclamation site and the director of the Borg research is apparently Hugh, the ex-Borg, who was the subject of the Star Trek TNG episode, I Borg, or at least that's what I think he is. So in the previous episode, they were taking parts off the X-Borg and Soji spoke to one of the X-Borg in a language that required subtitles. And I wasn't sure if it was 
Romulan or the language of the subject themselves. So it turns out that it was actually the language of the ex-Borg. And Hugh is apparently impressed that Soji spoke to the ex-Borg in their native tongue. And then they go on about how she'll get to speak to Rhonda. Maybe she'll ask her to help her. And this scene is just bizarre. Because in TNG they would have had some lead up scenes. Like they would have introduced this character Rhonda. And then they would have followed it up with Soji maybe showing in her face that she's fascinated by her. And then maybe have her like putting in a request to interview her or something. And then finally they grant her permission. But in this it's sort of the other way around. It's like hey let me speak to Rhonda. And I'm just watching it thinking who the hell is Rhonda? And then they're like, oh, Rhonda, yes, the Borg. So Hugh just basically says, oh, yeah, you've been pestering me about her for a long time. Like, they should show this and don't tell us. So Rhonda was apparently a Romulan, like, historian who researched myths. And then Soji goes on about the therapeutic utility of a shared mythical framework which I take to mean people like other people from the same culture or something. And it turns out that Raffi knows stuff about the Federation being infiltrated, uh, maybe because she's in security or something. I, I'm not sure. I seem to say that I'm not sure a lot in this show. It's, it's bizarre. So Raffi says that she basically has a hunch that the Romulans sabotaged the Exodus from Romulus. And then she acts all annoyed at Picard and tells him, like, no, nah, I don't want to hear it. Get away from me. And then she turns to him and says, like, please, like, just leave me alone. And then he gets up and walks, like, less than 10 steps. And she's like, I'll get you that ship you wanted. I'm like, what? Are you, are you angry with him or are you not? So she's going to get him a pilot named Rios. So the next scene is the robot doctor... Gerardi, she's like sitting out in a field at the Daystrom Institute, knock an hour. And the camera pans around and Commodore Oh is standing there. She's the Vulcan Starfleet officer who in the last episode was seen to be dealing with the Romulan spies. But she's just standing there behind Agnes like until she notices her. She doesn't like tap her on the shoulder or anything. And I'm wondering, why did she go herself? Why didn't she send a spy or something? And why is she interviewing her? She already knows what Picard's up to. But she says she wants to know about her meetings with Picard. Oh, and her ears are like perpendicular to her head. They're, they're perfectly sideways, like a pig's ears. Like they're tucked behind her hair or something. I don't know. Or is it just because she's wearing sunnies? Maybe the, the arms of the sunnies are pulling her ears forward? Weird. So then Soji gets let in to see the XBs, the X-Borgs, and they're playing triominoes or tarot cards. And then we shuffle over to Rafi's trailer and she's reading something on her iPad and Picard rings her and says here's some more stuff to look at. And she's like, I don't want to look at it. And he's like, all right, I'll see you when you've read it. And she's like, uh, I suppose. Like, has he made her his slave or something? Both of these last two scenes are pointless. Like, they should be attached to later scenes because they just lead into the later scene better than being on their own. So Picard beams upon some ship and this guy comes out from a corridor and says like, oh, you're probably too late. It's like, Late, late for what? Like, have they found more work? Or have they decided that they're not going to help him? Or what's the go? Why, why is he too late? And then we get introduced to the biggest badass mofo with tats, cigars, whiskey, beards, no pain, and a devil may care attitude. It's Chris Rios. My man. My main man. So they've got this emergency medical hologram, which later on they referred to as an emergency navigational hologram. Unless there's two of them. But there's also like an engineering one. I don't know. And the holograms and the captain of this ship are played by the same person. Now, that won't get confusing at all. Um, neither will it allow for 
amusing plot lines like, oh no, the captain's dead. Oh wait, no, it wasn't the captain. It was actually a hologram. Whoops. And this dude totally reads books, dude. So Rios tells Picard to have a seat and he looks at the captain's chair and like, hmm, no, I won't. I'll go sit in the navigational officer's seat or the comms officer's seat. I don't know. So this Rios guy was apparently on another ship called the Even Measured, which was in the Starfleet. But apparently Starfleet erased all record of this ship from its databases. And then he somehow works in the tragic sense of life into a sentence where it doesn't belong. And I think they just did it because that's the name of the book that he's reading. And I looked up what that book's about and it seems to be like, the futility of living and like the inevitability of death and the lack of interference from gods seems a bit highfalutin for me. So Raffi's looking through this data that Picard sent her and she's like looking to see what kind of encryption this file that he sent uses and apparently it uses Gorn Egg encryption. I'm like, you... Does anyone even know what a Gorn is? Or is Kirk the only person who's seen a Gorn? Because settlers went to the Gorn planet without realizing they were there. Does Starfleet know about the Gorn? And this data that she's hacking is like full of the sweetest buzzwords. Like quantum fingerprinting. And it says that it's from FreeCloud. Which sounds like a file hosting platform. But apparently it's a casino planet because a pop-up shows up with some dice on it. Please don't tell me it's Kanto Bite all over again. So the EMH tries to tell Captain Rios that, you know, you really should work with Captain Picard because he's a great hero. He's done all these things. He's the first contact with the Borg. He bloody did this and he did that. And Rios says, I'm not getting involved with another captain. Not since the last captain I was involved with got his head blown off. So Captain Rios lies back in his seat and he looks up at the skylight. There's a skylight in the roof of his ship for some reason. And he looks up at his skylight and he sees a shooting star. And I'm like, that's not how shooting stars work. Shooting stars work because they enter the atmosphere and the friction causes them to burn up. And then we have a touching scene at Chateau Picard where Laris and Picard are talking. And Picard basically says that he never really felt at home on Earth. And he gives the impression that he wants to be back among the stars. And then back on the reclamation site, and Soji's watching this Borg woman Rhonda play her tarot card game and she puts down a card and it's got a doorway on it and they're like oh the false door you know what that means don't you and she's like yeah because Romulan houses have a false front door and people who know them want to go in to the house they have to go around to the back door and Hugh basically says you're a real know-it-all aren't you and I'm like and back in Chateau Picard, this is the worst scene in the entire episode. Probably the worst scene in the entire series so far. The Romulant manservant of Picard, he's bringing some food. And he's like, oh, you know, you won't get this kind of goat's cheese in the replicators. So he's going through it one by one. Goat's cheese, shampoo, wine, and he drops one of them. And they all bend down simultaneously to pick it up. And just at that moment, a phaser is fired and hits the wall behind them. <gasps> what are the odds? So more of these motorcycle helmet wearing Romulan secret agents come into the house and start shooting it up. So Zarvan grabs a bottle of plonk and whacks one of these guys over the head with it. And I'm like, he's wearing a helmet like it would barely even rattle him. And in the kerfuffle, Picard gets thrown over a table and I'm like, well, there goes his hip. But no, he's fine. He's fine. And then it turns out that under like two of the desks, at least, they have phasers hidden under there in little holsters. Not like super glued or taped or anything. In a holster, so you can just grab it and boo boo! Worst scene ever. And then we get the cream on the cake. Someone's about to be shot. And just before they're shot, Dr. Agnes walks in and shoots him in the back. And this raises a million and one questions. Because where did Dr. Agnes get this rifle from? Like, she doesn't carry around a gun. It was one of the operative's guns. And the guy that she shot 
just walked through the same doorway that she walked in not one second after him. So why didn't he see her as he was walking in and shoot her? And also, what is she doing just walking into Picard's house at night? So then we have probably the most confusing scene of the entire series where Soji's talking to Rhonda the reclaimed Romulan. And she's talking some crap about, like, what do you call these things? Are they myths? And she's like, they're not myths, they're the news. And I'm like, what the f- What are you talking about? So is this Rhonda chick supposed to be psychic or something? Like, what the hell's going on? And then she says something about, I remember you from tomorrow. What the f- Ah, like, they're not bringing psychics in, are they? Like, I mean, the empaths were bad enough. So one of the assassins that Picard and crew managed to disable, uh, they pull the helmet off him and then they make some quip about him being a northerner Romulan. Like, are the northerners the bumpy-headed one or is this some sort of, like, northern island type deal? And then Rhonda says that Soji is apparently the destroyer. And, like, which one of the two sisters is she? Is she the one who lives or the one who dies? And then she calls her, like, St. Genie or something. It's just, it's just random garbage. So then Soji calls her mum to see if her sister's okay. And the mum says something about she's looking to adopt a dog. And then Soji, like, starts uh, falling asleep. And I'm like, I know how you feel. I'm watching this episode too. Oh, wait, she's not watching the episode. She's in the episode. So he's adopting a dog like a code word to deactivate her or something. And is anyone else getting a Dr. Kawashima's brain training for the DS vibe from this phone that she's using? So then Narek walks in and he's that emo looking Romulan from like two episodes ago. And Soji basically tells him all about what happened. And she's like, I don't even know how I knew half the stuff that I know. And then Narek tells her that he loves her. Cool. And then Narek's sister is on board. She's the chick who was with the Vulcan security officer at Starfleet. They're like double agents or spies or something. The Jard Vash. And she's in some sexy tight leather. And do I detect a hint of incest? Hmm. So then Agnes tells Picard that she's joining him. Because apparently she wants to see this robot. And they missed out an opportunity to have a reference. Picard could have said, two to beam aboard. But he didn't. And then in the least shocking shock ever, Raffi's on board the ship. She says she wants to bum a ride to Free Cloud. Apparently they have the best snake leaf in the quadrant. And then Picard says it, a reference. He says, engage. And then there's a nice little bit of TNG fanfare. So I'm going to give this episode of Star Trek Picard a 7 out of 10. It's a little bit better story-wise than the previous episodes. A little bit easier to follow. But there's still a lot of scenes with just mumbo-jumbo. I like to see them have less scenes where they introduce a character and then don't mention their name for about 20 or 30 minutes. Like, they did that this episode with Hugh. They talked to him for a bit and you're like, who's this guy? What's his name? And then about 20 minutes later they say, oh, so Hugh here was telling me this thing happened. It's like, can you just introduce him as Hugh from the start? So as far as I can tell, they haven't named the ship yet. And I bet that's going to come up next episode because it just seems to be the way things work around here. Oh no, you don't get to know the name right now. You have to wait. And they really need to stop having the next week on Star Trek Picard thing at the end. Because if you're not there with your hand on the mouse straight away to stop it, it just keeps rolling and you're like, no, no, I don't want the spoilers. So I hope you enjoyed this review of Star Trek Picard Season 1, Episode 3, The End is the Beginning. If you did, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the share button. 